Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins and thank you so much for joining me today. Now we are looking at Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide today. This is part of a Distress Ink and Oxide colour combination series on YouTube. So thank you so much if you've been joining me along the way so far. This is around the 26th or 27th video so we are uh, really getting through them. Now we're working through all the colours alphabetically so we're now on to the H's. We're getting towards the middle of the alphabet which is really exciting that we're almost halfway there already. Uh, there are colour combinations for every single Distress Oxide that we've looked at so far, um, two for each at least, um, and we're also comparing each of the colours to anything that's kind of similar in the Distress Ink and Oxide range as well, so that you can see whereabouts it sits on that colour chart. So like I say, Hickory Smoke today, a beautiful grey. Um, let's just swatch this for you first of all so you can see how it looks in the flesh. Now first thing to notice is that it's not too dissimilar from the label on the front so the ink pad is always a little bit deceptive because of course that is you know that's saturated with ink so what we want to see is what it actually looks like on paper. So I'm just using my blending brushes and my blending brushes are definitely my preferred way of applying ink rather than a uh, foam or any other way. I do like the smooching technique, which we did in the last video. There are different Distress Ink and Oxide techniques thrown into these videos as well, so um, have a little browse through some of those. But that's what Hickory Smoke looks like. Now, what I love about a neutral colour, particularly things like this, which is a grey, um, is that it will go with any colour imaginable. It will go with cools, it will go with uh, warms, purples, pinks, blues, reds, oranges. You know, you can really work this into any colour. I think the trick is to make sure if you're working it into a bright colour is to find a nice middleman as such, a middle colour. But I'm going to show you some of that throughout this uh, video anyway. So there is the Hickory Smoke and let's now look at how it compares to other greys that sit in the Distress Ink and Oxide range. So if I come towards the end of my there we go, it's just this one. There aren't that many greys, but towards the end here, now we've got Hickory Smoke at the bottom, as you can see, and we've also got Pumice Stone, which is a much, much paler. Lost Shadow is extremely pale as well, a bit cooler than Pumice Stone. Um, and that really, that's it. Now I'm just going to bring out as well Black Soot, because Black Soot, I always say, is a charcoal, but you can see how much darker that is. So looking at this, you can, there really is a, nothing that sits around Hickory Smoke. It's a lovely mid-grey, I think. So, okay, let's get on to our first colour combination. Now, I'm going to go a bit wild with these, uh, a little bit different. So bear with me and we'll see what the end result is. So let's just give this a wipe. Now, I wipe my mats, my blending mats, between every um, ink in, every time I change ink colour rather and I also dry them because Distress Oxides are reactive with water that is uh, one of their main properties and of course you don't want water or dampness from cleaning your mat getting into your ink while you're blending it it may be an effect that you want to go for later now my first colour combination is going to be what I call tonal so I'm going to stick with the other two colours being uh, really one one colour but different shades of almost. So I've, I'm going into a nice bright ripe persimmon um, but with this one I love I love 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 this colour. It's quite a new colour to me. It's one of the last ones that I actually got um, but I, so I haven't used it that much but as I say going from a grey into a nice bright colour you need a middleman as such. Now I've got dried marigold and as you can see my dried marigold label is a little bit dirty. We do already have a video for dried marigold um, on the playlist so go and check that out. So let's go into dried marigold first. Now because this is a paler colour it will be easier to work into the grey. Now the grey's been on the cardstock for a couple of minutes already. So that's going to have started to dry. So I am going to apply a little bit more to aid with the blending. I'm just working the two. Look, by using two pale colours, reasonably pale colours, creamy colours, they have worked in beautifully. Now you can see there the difference between the wet ink and the dry ink. So do let your projects dry before you decide whether or not you really love or dislike a colour because when it's dried it does lighten up quite a lot. 
So I'm not going to be keep reworking that, reworking that. I know there's plenty of ink on there. You're not going to be adding ink and making it darker and darker all the time. So I'm not worried about this patch eventually being darker. It will all be the same shade. So now we're going into the darker orange. I'm going to wipe and dry this again. And ripe persimmon. So look at this. Look how beautiful and bright and vivid this colour is. Now I'm just going up to the dried marigold. I'm not going to go any further into it because it is a really strong colour. So I want to bring the dried marigold up to there instead. So pick up some more. Now with what's on my brush, I'm first of all going to go along the centre there where I want to make sure the dried marigold is solid. And then I'm going to start blending in small circles upwards into the ripe persimmon, like so, lightening up until I don't have any more there. Now, because I've gone into the uh, ripe persimmon, I'm going to have some slightly darker orange on my brush. So just on my dry kitchen towel, I'm just going to rub off that excess like so. And then I'm going to pick up some more and just make sure that I'm happy with the blend lines to both colours in the middle there. And I am happy with those. Lovely. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now, of course, don't forget throughout this entire series, even if you're not in love with uh, the first colour that we're looking at, you may find combinations like these two that you want to use in your projects. You may just like to use the first two colours that we mix, absolutely. So that is Hickory Smoke, Dried Marigold and Ripe Persimmon. Now let's clean up again and let's move on to our next colour combination. Now this one, obviously again, I'm going to be using Hickory Smoke, but let's just put that there to remind us and this is again a little bit different I haven't tested this one out I've looked at the colors and I think they're going to work but look at those for a different color combination now I usually do a three color and a four color combination occasionally you might even get a five color combination um, I've actually got a couple of others to show you that I've already blended um, when we finish this one too so stay tuned for those just to show you how the grays really can work into any colors so let's put down hickory smoke first again let's just work our way through these four colors so basically I think gray can go into anything it can really it can be combined with anything when I say go into anything I think you need to be a little bit careful about um, how you blend them so for example I probably wouldn't try putting the gray directly into dark green the same way as I wouldn't put the gray, gray directly into the right persimmon. I find that middleman and that's what the salvage patina is going to be, is my middleman between the deep dark green and the gray. But I think if you go by this rule and you find yourself three colors, one which is kind of lighter and in between the gray and the darker color, and of course within the distress oxide range, there's loads of colors and shades to play with here. Look how beautifully those two have just work together. Sorry, I digress. But if you, as long as you go by that rule and you find yourself a middleman, a middle colour, you should be able to take grey into absolutely any shade. And this being the mid grey within the distress range, I think it's the ideal one to get started with. So I think that is an absolutely beautiful colour combination. So that's salvage patina into hickory smoke, just for those two. Now let's just take away the paler colours because oxides do go on quite creamy. And if you've got a pale colour, sometimes you can actually see the creaminess and almost a white sheen, a pale sheen. Uh, and if you're going into a darker colour, as we're going to be with Lucky Clover next, um, you can sometimes see that kind of creaminess sitting on top of the vivid colour. So I want to make sure that I'm cleaning my mat and not bringing the light ink where I don't want it. So then a little bit more. So I've just gone into a patch there. It's a really strong dark colour, so I don't want to go too far. Uh, picking up a bit more salvage patina and I'm going to work this blend line now. So that blend line's done, happy with that. Now I've got some, as you can probably just see, I've got some Lucky Clover on my brush there. So I'm just going to remove that onto a tissue because I feel that there's probably a little bit too much Lucky Clover and not enough salvage patina. I don't want to lose this gorgeous teal. I just want it to, that's better, that's much better. So just brought a bit more into there. Now, 
again, wipe, so wipe between each one. If you're working on something absorbent, like a scrap of paper, you don't need to worry quite so much about always wiping. I'm working onto a resistant mat, so the ink's going to stay uh, damp for a long time, so that will just end up being pulled onto my swatch if I don't clean it off. Fossilised amber next. So lovely bright yellow, and I do like to have a pop of colour in my combination. Something nice and bright somewhere along the line. And then with what's left of the Lucky Clover on my brush, I'm going to just start blending. Now these two are quite different colours, so it's going to take a little bit longer to blend these two. So as I've mentioned in previous videos, rather than doing big swooping circles, to blend these, just do little ones, just little ones. And of course, if you need to clean off your brush between. So I think I'm going to clean my brushes off, clean my mat off, and dry my mat. And then probably just work a little more Lucky Clover in here. And keep, keep going until you're happy. You can keep layering these colors. I would just say don't let any of the colours dry it does make it much harder then to be blending and then we we are into our yellow beautifully now that is as I said that is a different colour combination um, I'm actually and I'm excited to try this on a card now I've done quite a large chunk of the grey there at the bottom because that's our hero colour today and as well with the salvage patina now as I said to you about looking at colour combinations throughout this vid these videos salvage patina into lucky clover is really nice actually quite subtle and then lucky clover into fossilized amber you could just use those two if you wanted so I'm hoping you're getting lots of inspiration for different color combinations whether it's two three or four colors uh, throughout this series but they are some there are some more color combinations for you now let's just pop this away because I've got one more thing to show you so let's pop our hickory smoke to the side so we have done our dried marigold and our ripe persimmon we have done our salvage patina, lucky clover and fossilised amber, both with the uh, hickory smoke. But what I've also done is two other combinations for you here. And these are, so we've got a stormy sky and uncharted mariner, just there, slightly smaller swatches, just to show you. And then on this one, I've actually blended it into pumice stone. So hickory smoke into pumice stone, see how beautifully that works. And then into tattered rose as well so you can see how grey really can work into absolutely any colour you want to if you're just really clever with um, with the kind of the middleman as I keep saying and I'm just going to sit them that way so that the grey doesn't look quite so <laughs> at the bottom so you can see the different colour combinations and I think grey is lovely if you're not sure on a third colour just go with something tonal like these two and add the grey in try adding the grey in the middle see what that looks like i just think grey is an essential for your distress ink and oxide collection okay i hope this helped some of you uh, don't forget all the links for everything i've used is are down below um, as is the link that takes you to the printable distress oxide chart and i would really love a thumbs up and a subscribe if you're not already a subscriber but a huge thank you to everyone who has already subscribed you're all wonderful okay i'll be back very soon with another distress oxide combination video take care